valuable. Everybody's time is valuable. Like, if there's something I want to do, I'll tick it off. There's just no point in putting things off for me anymore. My name's Robbie McNabb, and I'm the captain at Cowden Beath. Let's pretend I've done like an extensive, like, five, ten minute warm up. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to do my service here to put tens on. <laughs> so, I've been a personal trainer for three years now. I've worked in the fitness industry for five years. Always been involved with sports. I love training, I love exercise. Robbie, as a kid, was very active. My name's Amanda, and I'm Robbie's mum. Always had to take him somewhere that he could run off the energy. He was my wee lovable rogue. We got him some football boots and a ball, and that was it. That was the start of it. Never stopped. My dad always played football. Well, obviously, it's just something that's kind of installed in you for a young age. It just kind of starts to snowball from there once you maybe realise you've got a, a wee bit of something about you. He was playing with one of the local teams at home, and then somebody approached us to speak to us, a scout from Falkirk. Probably started there when I was like 12, maybe. And then ended up staying there till I was about 19. Um, went right up all the way through the youth. My dad was like majorly proud. He was always all for it and he was always like encouraging it. So started off at Falkirk, signed for Stirling Albion. And Lithgow Rose, signed for Kelty, and now signed with Cowden Beath. Bit of a journeyman. Oh, Alan was uh, over the moon, really over the moon, because he played football amateur level and never ever quite got that step up. So seeing his son do that really made him proud. Growing up, my dad was your kind of typical man's man. Watched the football, went to the football, he was always, 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 always doing stuff. But 38, 39, um, we started noticing some th behavioural problems. He was reacting really um, erratic. My dad now is showing quite high symptoms of uh, Huntington's disease. It's a complex neurological disorder caused by an inherited faulty gene. It starts to wear away at your, your kind of mental, your mental well-being, your mental health, your physical health as well. Those impacted by Huntington's disease may eventually lose the ability to walk, talk, eat, drink, make rational decisions for themselves and care for themselves. Symptoms typically begin to emerge between the ages of 30 and 50. The man that you see now is some of the man that you, you seen five, 10, 15 years ago. It's now starting to affect his motor skills, so it's starting to affect his walking, his legs. I would say the strong, the strong, determined, fit man I knew, he's gone. So with Huntington's disease, there is a 50-50 chance that your child can inherit the gene. Once you know this, I thought it was important for myself to get tested like, as soon as possible, just because always you need to know what kind of cards you've been dealt. When he got home, I knew Beast face when he walked in the house, and I just let out a scream and hit the floor. When it's your husband, it's hard enough, but when it's your child, that's hard to deal with. Huntington's can affect you, like, slowly. The quality of life that I might have in 20, 30 years' time might not be the same as those around you. The way I think about it in my head is it almost like, it's not so much a ticking time bomb, but it's just like a slow burner. Once I tested positive for it, it was like, right, you've not got as many quality years as everybody else does, so what are you going to do about it? If there's something I want to do, I'll tick it off. Last year it was skydiving. This year I decided to run up Ben Nevis. Checking in. 
from what could be easily the most beautiful scene in the world, man. That moment when I seen the footage, I burst into tears. I just thought, oh my God, he's such a determined boy. The perspective that I've probably just got in general with life and then taking that into football is like, you'll get beat on a Saturday, you'll be upset, but at the end of the day, like, nobody's dead. Like, football's like, it probably is an escape, in a way. Because for 90 minutes, you're thinking about nothing else but for 22 men and a bag of air. Like, I think it's good to feel, like, upset. I think it's good to feel great, like, when I lose. But I think it's important not to, like, overly dwell on it. I'm proud of that big guy that's running about a park. He's so determined. Like, some part of me kind of deep down, there's always this wee part of me that's always thinking that, like, it's there. I didn't really feel like I need to run and scream from the kind of hills, so to speak, um, that I've got this disease, but I live my life today for how it can affect me tomorrow. How the disease affected my dad is frustrating for me. I'm 27. He's maybe 54, 55 now. I could look at that and think to myself, like, right, that's going to be me or I can do everything in my power to put myself in as best a place as possible for when the time comes. Time is precious, but not just for people suffering with neurological diseases. It's precious for everybody.